Saudi Arabia again. It's a big day there. Two Saudi astronauts will be uh, traveling to the International Space Station for the first time on a private mission. Bastien Bori in Dubai. Good evening, Bastien. Big day. Yes, takeoff is, is happening tonight, actually, uh, from um, Florida. Um, what time is it here? It's, uh, it's 8.30, so yeah, in about five hours for this mission that will also have uh, the, the merits of taking the first Arab Muslim woman into space. Um, the Saudis basically want to do what other Gulf countries like the United Arab Emirates have already done, that is to say, uh, send a manned mission to the International Space Station. And if it's Riyadh's turn, it is thanks to a tripartite agreement between um, SpaceX, who built the probe that will take these Saudi astronauts, um, Axiom Space, an American company specializing in space tourism, and the Saudi government who bought for um, several hundred million dollars two seats uh, on board this pro, which means that the two Saudi astronauts will have a lot of work to do uh, with a lot of experiments to carry out up there, um, data to collect and also access. They will have access to sensitive information, which they will then be able to share with the, um, the, the, the Saudi space agency data that will be later very useful for the space ambitions uh, of the country. Yeah, we, we spoke before here about the uh, Saudi diplomatic ambitions. What are the space ambitions? Well, a lot of these big announcements and you know missions uh, are intended to raise or increase at least awareness uh, step by step about the next big projects that will need strong support from civil society in Saudi Arabia because the Saudi space program is, uh, yes, it is young, but it's already, let's say, in the top 20 at global level. And over the next decade, the, the Saudis plan to invest billions uh, of dollars in this sector, the idea being to develop an ecosystem merging public and private projects, but similar to how NASA evolved in the US, uh, for instance. So they see themselves in the future as a space superpower or power? Well, initially, the Saudis, um, it's true, played a key role in, in the creation of ArabSat, a pan-Arab satellite communication company in 1976, so long ago. Um, and by two, 2030, they will spend an additional billion dollars uh, to develop their space program. That said, the country remains an outsider for the, for the moment. Uh, the, the Saudi space agency is, is very young. It was only created uh, five years ago in 2018, so its power is mainly based for the moment on cooperation agreements with the other countries. And same goes with the United Arab Emirates, um, countries that are um, real powers and have a real control over telecommunications. We're talking about the US, China, Russia, uh, India also, uh, to gradually become an autonomous uh, power. But to acquire this status, it is necessary to have a launch base. Uh, there are very few countries that have one. Uh, there is the US with uh, Cape Canaveral, um, Europe with the uh, French base of Kourou in, in French Guiana, um, Russia, China, India, Brazil, Iran, and Israel with the Palmachim Air Base, which is not too far uh, from Tel Aviv, by the way. Right. Everything is not too far from Tel Aviv here. Uh, but what about the other Gulf countries uh, looking at this, uh, um, their neighboring uh, Saudi Arabia? What, what's their ambition? Um, the, the UAE is, is on the same uh, the same note. So they they sent uh, for the first time a few months ago uh, the first Emirati astronauts uh, to the International Space Station, making, making the, the the UAE the first Arab country to do so um, before the, before Saudi Arabia. This astronaut will uh, stay for a period of six months uh, on, in the International Space Station. Will then come back and um, like this for this these Saudi astronauts, he will be able to share these information uh, with the uh, Emirati space uh, space uh, program. Okay, Bastien Barin, Dubai, thank you very much for that.